Good morning from Toronto, Canada. And uh, today I have a very interesting gentleman with me. I've got um, uh, Florian Sengschmidt. From, he is the CEO of Azerbaijan Tourism. And I'm really honored to have him because in this unprecedented time, we want to reach out to these uh, smaller nations and look at their readiness and, uh, on recovery, look at how they are coping at this moment. And I'm sure that there are uh, activities that they are uh, undertaking that everybody in the world can learn from. Welcome, Florian. Good evening, Zumaira. Nice meeting you. Thank you for the invitation. And a good evening from Summer Sunny Baku. Uh, you are most uh, welcome. So tell us um, uh, that um, I want to dig right in and tell us where you are on the whole spectrum of uh, recovery from this unprecedented uh, pandemic. So uh, let me let me a bit recap. Um, um, 2019 was an amazing year. Was the first full year when we have uh, rolled out our Take Another Look brand um, to the world. And um, 2019 was uh, we closed with a, a plus of um, uh, almost 15 percent, um, uh, 3.2 million visitors, and um, um, a great uh, um, a great performance for for Azerbaijan. Um, even the first two months of uh, 2020 looked um, uh, um, very, very promising for this year. Our key, key target markets or key source markets um, were growing um, with, a, with a, um, an unexpected, uh, unexpected plus uh, in the first two months. And then um, also COVID-19 hit us. Uh, first, obviously, the figures from China went down, uh, followed now uh, in April with almost uh, all other markets and the figures dropped by uh, more than 90% um, to uh, compared to uh, over 2019. We have relatively, relatively quick came up with a four phases uh, recovery plan. Uh, first phase of the lockdown, uh, we are uh, uh, grateful that this is over um, since uh, last week. Uh, parks have opened, uh, life is back to the street, um, restaurants open during the day till 6 p.m. So we see that basically um, um, slowly life is coming back to, to the city and to the country. Um, phase number two, and we are already in the, in the, in the, in the footsteps for that, is um, domestic tourism. As many other nations, um, we are putting um, domestic travel first and um, inviting all Azerbaijanis to, to discover their, all these like undiscovered and unraveled uh, beauties uh, here in the country. And uh, uh, third phase is regional uh, corridors, uh, bilateral corridors, more regional travel um, is happening uh, already in most of European countries, um, Southern Europe, uh, Central Europe um, is uh, basically connecting with the neighboring countries and phase four would be um, uh, full back on international travel. Um, during, during the lockdown, we have uh, so when like do you, many other- uh, So when do you, sorry, I'm interrupting, but it's really sure, important sure, sure. Uh, that you've started off by telling us about these four phases. I'm quite surprised, uh, to be pleasantly surprised, because uh, I think you seem to be a nation in, in a state of readiness, uh, you know, towards recovery. This is encouraging, and you seem to have a strategy. <laughs> this is really, really uh, the key. But the fourth phase, that when you want to welcome the international traveler, I'm going to push you a little bit on that. And I, I would love to hear that. When do you envisage for that to happen? I mean, no, 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 no big assumptions, no glass ball here in Azerbaijan. Um, but um, I'm, I'm realistic to see that for the first quarter uh, 2021 in a, in a, in a full basically opening and uh, uh, when we see international markets uh, growing in again. Um, okay. Until then, I see it more on the on domestic travel, regional travel. I see that we will have, um, we will have um, people coming in on business purposes, uh, uh, but the leisure, um, I see smaller business events um, will turn into hybrid events um, um, only, only beginning of 2021. So, 
I see that is a realistic, a realistic timeline for that. Um, and not only because of the readiness uh, of, of the country, I think because of the readiness of many things of our um, um, overall psychological readiness to travel, of like uh, uh, new air transport uh, uh, rules, of like uh, uh, rules at, uh, at, um, at airports. Um, we do not know yet um, um, how um, countries will handle if they have to return to a lockdown uh, because of a second wave. What does what would that mean? I'm sure um, uh, no nation would be uh, would be servicing so many repatriation flights as they did before. So all these I think will will um, will make us to slow down a bit more and see um, really see how this first reopening uh, works, how business travel resumes, how, how easy it is to travel uh, internationally. And so obviously- which is, your, the, which is the, your largest market? The largest markets for us is uh, neighboring markets. So we're looking at regional markets, Russia, um, uh, Georgia, Turkey, and um, uh, GCC. Basically uh, fastest growing markets is uh, um, India, Pakistan, and China as well followed by uh, followed by um, southeast asia especially um, looking at japan and south korea european markets are important for us especially in the segment of culture traveler but um, i would see uh, still that um, underrepresented um, and uh, the entire region underrepresented so there is a lot to go what we uh, picked up also uh, over last year but our our like most important markets are uh, regional markets. Not to forget, we have uh, we have uh, uh, Russia in the north, we have Iran in the south. Uh, two uh, very large uh, outbound travel, uh, potential outbound travel markets. So nestled in between gives us um, so brings a lot of things. But out. currently, your borders are all closed. Currently, currently the borders currently the borders are all closed. Um, the airport. Uh, remains also fully closed uh, until the end of May. We uh, we expect uh, we expect uh, uh, domestic airline uh, domestic air service to pick up uh, in the mid of June. This is all assumptions and forecasts from my side. Nothing nothing confirmed. And hope that also um, towards the end of June, um, uh, beginning of July, we see international. Um, routes opening again. We see that uh, uh, our main carriers, Turkish Airlines, Qatar Airways, Lufthansa, when you look into, into schedules for now, you see end of June, beginning of July as, um, as the reopening date. But we will all be faced um, not, only, uh, not only with um, um, reduced um, interest or um, basically a higher awareness in where to travel, but also simply that uh, um, air carriers will only carry out a part of their uh, a part of their frequency. We see, I estimate this will be roughly twenty to twenty five percent of the original volume. So um, twenty to twenty five. Yeah, I think around twenty to twenty five percent um, will be will be of the capacity than than pre COVID. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, Tell me, because um, uh, where is the, uh, so the, the, the numbers in Azerbaijan have been a little conservative as compared to other nations um, uh, where the COVID is concerned. You see is, uh, is basically when you look at the curve in Azerbaijan, um, it was like a, a very slow growing in the beginning. It was like 20, 25 cases. Then the curve went down um, and then actually um, the, second, uh, uh, the second wave here in Azerbaijan with returning, uh, um, returning and repatriation um, basically uh, came in. So currently the curve is, uh, is uh, uh, thankfully going down again. It's around, uh, I think around 100 cases now uh, per day um, in, the, in the degrees it declining um, uh, also. Okay. For like uh, for a nation of like ten million, yeah. um, this is still this is still um, a number which is uh, compared to many other nations uh, uh, very small, and this is uh, definitely because of the very early, uh, very early uh, closing of borders. Like all all land borders, all international uh, uh, borders were closed. Um, e visa and visa was immediately suspended mid of March. So Azerbaijan was, I think, one of the first countries. Um, who really went into into closing the borders and uh, looking at it domestically and tell me about this um, you know this is really interesting because the whole premise of this interview is that we can take away ideas okay and when i was uh, reading about azerbaijan i 
found that you've launched a health and safety campaign uh, which uh, covers uh, hygiene and you've done that in collaboration with the uh, another uh, health department of the government and so tell us a little bit about it give us a sense what this campaign is all about when did you exactly start who are the key partners in yes. it i think you know like what this uncertainty brought is like, like is um obviously to put the strategic framework um in um with um, every day changing news and uh, changing changing um, environment, but still to keep on a certain um, to put a certain pillars ahead. And we said, okay, this first phase of the lockdown is obviously um, we also launched uh, virtual tours. We made like these virtual experiences. We turned our B two B campaigns into virtual campaigns. So this was like uh, um, this was something what we said, okay, this was everyone doing, and um, we obviously obviously also um, um, have to please the market with that. But I think what was much more important for us to already think right um, um, quite early in the beginning on how can we restore um, confidence of travelers, not even thinking so much about international travelers, but first into, into domestic travelers. And um, we said, increase the uh, sanitation, increased hygiene. The less you know about the market, the more you need to be confident on the, uh, on um, that uh, safety and hygiene measures are up to up to standard and beyond standard actually exceeding standards um, when you travel post covid so um, um sahman which in azerbaijani means tidiness um, and stands in english for uh, an abbrevi abbreviation of uh, um, sanitation and hygiene methods and norms was launched um, um, by us we have invited other government authorities uh, food safety agency joined uh, we are also in close coordination with ministry of health um, and have also presented and have received um, the go-ahead from the cabinet of ministers who is coordinating the overall um, um, overall COVID um, range so there, so there is a whole brand being launched around it. So that's the peace of mind for the for exactly. So um, if you if you look it up, it's uh, uh, www.sahman. Dot .az. Um, we have put a brief uh, uh, summary in English because uh, media has shared it and has picked it up on uh, uh, globally. But actually, the entire campaign is how we can integrate partners along the value chain. So it's not only about uh, hotels. We know that Four Seasons in Baku and JW they are implementing their own standards. We yeah. thought, like, what do we, what do we, how do we, how do we integrate tour guides? How do we integrate uh, a rural accommodation, which is um, hotel-like accommodation? What is about touristic transportation and also attractions, venues, um, um, uh, architectural, historic reserves, etc. So it's like it's a, it's a, it's an it's a program for the key partners along the value chain. How does it start? You register on the website. You are immediately, you have immediately to, to fill a form on who is the uh, program manager of Sahman in your entity or like who are you um, to be uh, to be certified because it's, uh, it must be a company slash um, um, individual, but someone, uh, someone in charge of that. There is certain questions on, yes. So, go ahead go ahead yeah so the, this is like really interesting because for a small nation like yours you know to to come up with something like this when did you a when did you actually launch this thing and i would be, and, um, so singapore was one of the first countries to come up uh, with sg clean one of the campaigns and we were talking about that that a lot and i've been looking for, for a really concrete example of a, of another country you know who's come up uh, with something like that now more and more countries are picking up on on the idea tell me but it's really in, uh, the proof of the uh, the pudding is in really implementation of it so yes. what is the reaction uh, from uh, from the tourism travel and tourism sector to to this How, uh, what what does the rollout look like because it's one thing to yep. create the brand, brands and standards i'm really interested to hear about the rollout because uh, absolutely uh, yeah and and i think it's like that what we've all followed is like uh, um, some um, some programs have been launched very quickly and um, and with a, with a with a brand behind and a brand for a brand power behind this is also what we have to consider yeah. we launched sahman in um, very early of may internally so we really put it out um, 
to Azerbaijan, to the industry, to the locals. We have shared it with uh, UNWTO. We have made sure from the very beginning on that although it's, a, it's more of a national program, we have also the transparency and um, audit of an uh, independent uh, partner in there. So PWC is our licensing and um, uh, audit partner in that program. And we have came up with a clear process. So it's like when we launched it, we wanted to make sure that actually there is something behind that. It's not only a campaign. It's not only like a brand visual, but there is a process. So you register, you immediately you have to certify, uh, fill out a form. You have to certify also like with a, a company and identity behind that you agree to all the things and that you will be in the case of not, not compilation. Um, uh, there is consequences and then you immediately start an online uh, program so we use a uh, very inno innovative uh, online training e-learning platform for that e so okay. depending on depending on what stakeholder you are are you a tour guide are you a hotel are you like a, um, different uh, partners of us for example for hotels it's the hotel association with their inspecting team uh, for the tour guides is the Azerbaijan uh, Tour Guides Association. So they have come up with individualized um, uh, training programs. This is on um, video tutorials. This is like um, 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 PDF documents, so training documents in an online format, um, all based on like either World Health Organization, either we have got a lot of best practices. In the beginning, it was only SG Clean, um, uh, but like step by step, Accor launched, other like brands launched their campaigns. So we have learned what they put in, and for each value chain partner, we have integrated that content. Then once you pass that basically um, a course, there is um, a mandatory, um, um, you have to pass three days of mandatory web coaching. So you, you're going, you, we are going live uh, to certain session hours, the teams of the tour guides, the teams of the hotel association with their inspector. And you have to basically in the first, in the first uh, approach, show us around, ask your questions. We will ask a lot of questions, how you have implemented one or the other uh, 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 criteria along that guideline. And then, um, so, so uh, basically, and then we see um, once they open up, uh, uh, also the, the regional, uh, the regions, because we had a lockdown so that we were not allowed to travel in between regions. Now also we see um, that our the DMO offices, destination management offices, and the tra tour guides around the country, they are kind of like, um, how you would say, peer inspectors uh, for, for the partners um, out in the regions, because this is key, you know, it's like, less worried again about international brand hotels, et cetera. So we want to make sure that we reach to the really local uh, area in the regions. And uh, so our network of destination management organizations, regional offices of our tourist board, of guides who are working in the regions, those are our peer inspectors. They provide us feedback. Uh, they provide a status update on how they are doing certain partners. And then PWC, PWC comes in and cross inspects um, a That's certain amazing. sample size uh, on, that, on that program. That's amazing. That's amazing. And, and the response from the industry, uh, like- Very, very good. Very good. You know, it's like, because what is the, what is even from big chain hotels, they say, listen, it's great that we have Sahman because we, A, we can differentiate because uh, what is important, we made Sahman an integra uh, integrative part of our domestic campaign we are launching now. So if you are a Sahman partner, you will be prioritized in the domestic campaign. Basically, you have a little tag on this. Yes, I am Sahman oh. certified. Oh. So we will show those Sahman partners uh, uh, first. We will promote them that they have undergone this special program. So yes. it's really from a, from a sanitation hygiene program into, into a, a very progressive uh, campaign. That, that's just incredible. I mean, uh, th this is one of the most concrete uh, examples I've uh, heard of. I, and I want to congratulate you, Florian, you. Uh, for putting in that, that effort and, and wait. Uh, I, as a nation, are you ready to buddy up with any other nation just to um, uh, guide them through this uh, uh, process? Because we are in it together, right? It's, this is the almost uh, absolutely. Absolutely. absolutely like, like the, the vaccine. You know, it has to be shared around the world. Yeah. It doesn't belong to one I person. Think, I feel these best practices absolutely. have to be shared around. I, I agree with you. You see, it's like I also can uh, uh, share with you how this process 
The good thing is again in Azerbaijan, we have set up in 2018 when we have uh, um, when we have uh, started with the state tourism agency and the Azerbaijan Tourism Board. Um, in most countries, you see the NTA and the NTO in different uh, um, in different organizations, different uh, also uh, really bodies and heads. In our case, like it's all under one roof, it's all under one umbrella. The chairman of the state tourism agency and uh, uh, um, myself, we are like sitting next to each other, we are working hand in hand. So whatever is policy making um, immediately flows through the value chain of an Absolutely. organization also into, into marketing, into campaigning. And I think um, taking this as an example, when we had 12, uh, when I had 12 colleagues on this Zoom meeting to launch some share the Sahman idea, it's like from marketing, from hotel association, from the O head, from the policy head, from um, um, legal department. So everyone on the team and everyone taking a, picking up a share and say, listen, uh, until the day after tomorrow, I come back with a feedback on what the other government authority does. I create a brand name. So I create a website. I create the e-learning platform. So, and it's so what I'm understanding, you've almost... Uh, created like 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 a task force, internal task force of various government departments absolutely, and units, absolutely. and everybody coming together and putting so not just the tourism and airline. So you're not working in isolation. You've got civil aviation, you've got health authorities, you've got food. We got everyone. We got everyone on the Zoom meeting. Uh, we had Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Uh, a Zoom meeting on that. This was our top priority project and. Uh, and um, you know, it's like I think with a clear with a clear project management, with clear responsibilities, with everyone ready to support and to contribute in 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 her or his uh, capacity. Um, I think this is uh, this is most important. And at the end, the puzzle came together, um, and um, and I'm very proud of it uh, for for the program and for also Azerbaijan really um, launching not only um, this brand but really a very clear, coherent, transparent uh, uh, process um, from, from the idea to the, to the implementation. Thank you. This is incredible. I'm, I'm very, very impressed. Uh, Florian, now, um, uh, just one final question I have, um, you know, so this is a crisis um, uh, and everybody is uh, taken by surprise. But out of every crisis, there is an opportunity. What is Azerbaijan's opportunity here? Our opportunity is really to improve, uh, uh, to improve services, to improve uh, ourselves, um, and um, and um, becoming uh, becoming better hosts in terms of uh, service quality, in terms of uh, um, what we do. For example, yes, we have uh, um, um, reduced international marketing, for example, partners marketing, while we are still online and do a lot of media, and but. Um, we have shifted our focus. We are creating a training center now. We are launching a training center within the regions. So we have combined different resources of different teams uh, from the uh, State Tourism Agency and Tourism Board, where is less work simply because of the, of the new situation, and put these resources together in a cross uh, a project team for setting up a training center. This is only one example. So there is uh, more on, um, on product development, experience development focus. We are launching um, uh, with locals like hiking programs, uh, bird watching. Excellent. So a lot of uh, a lot of things with, within the within the destination, and we use this chance to do our homework. That um, as soon as borders open, as soon as we uh, uh, welcome visitors again, we can really show them an um, an advanced and um, um, palette of experiences here. That's just incredible. I'm, I'm uh, really happy to have you here. So um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on this note, I'm, I'm positive note, I want to end this meeting. But uh, there were so many, normally I'm uh, speaking a lot in other interviews, but this one I was really giving Florian the chance because this was some really, really solid, concrete examples that he presented to us that if uh, you have a political will, you know, you can cut out through the political dramas and as a nation, you can come together, come together in this crisis, you know, and that's what they, this, the, um, uh, what he's spoken about has demonstrated as um, that 
Azerbaijan managed to do that. And they've launched all these incredible recovery programs, you know, and they are in that state of readiness, uh, you know, to combat perceptions, to, uh, to give peace of mind and to open their doors when the world is ready to travel again. Thank you very much, uh, Florian, for your time. I really appreciate it.